What is going on, family? God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. It's been a great weekend, an uh, interesting weekend, but great. I'm here, you're here, so that's a good thing. So God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. I try to do these Mondays through Fridays, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the East Coast Clock. And we just celebrated the birth of Jesus. And because it's on the calendar in our nation, we celebrate it. Um, but we don't worship the tree. We don't worship um, things of paganism or anything like that. Um, the fact that Jesus Christ, the fact that Jesus Christ was born from a virgin, amen, is to me, although Jesus himself never celebrated his birthday, amen, or was celebrated with him for him, amen. And I don't think that's a, a life or death situation. I don't think that's a heaven or hell situation. I don't think that's going to damage anything in my faith or in your faith celebrating Jesus' birth. As a matter of fact, if he had not been born the way he came, amen, then we won't have the resurrected Christ. That's just the, the facts. Um, his birth is just as important as his death. His death is just as important as his resurrection. His resurrection means everything to a Christ follower. Apostle Paul said, listen, if the resurrection of Jesus Christ never happened, then we have no gospel. We have no Christianity. We're still dying in our sin. So either Jesus did resurrect from death to life or he didn't. Very plain. Amen. And from the evidence of so many millions and millions and millions of people around this earth, plus um, the accounts that are all up in the scriptures, um, proves to be true that the fact that Jesus rose from the dead. If he didn't raise from the dead, amen, then he's not God. He's not the Christ. He's not the Savior. Amen. And I don't even know why I'm going there because it's all written. It's proven. Um, this documented, this eyewitnesses, and you know, you take that to a court of law, they they have to say this happened. Amen. It's overwhelming evidence of what happened during that time. Amen. So let's get into it. We're gonna be in Romans chapter eight, eleven to fourteen. Romans chapter eight, eleven to fourteen. Holy Spirit, God in you, is He in you? So this might be just for Christians. Actually, that is for Christians only because Christ. Um, lives in every single person who put his trust or her trust and hope in the Lord Jesus. Amen. And because we put our hope and trust in him and we believe in him and put our faith in him, then we have Holy Spirit God living inside of us. It's the promised Holy Spirit. Amen. It's nothing that I did, nothing that you could do, nothing that I could do to have this happen in our lives other than to surrender our sinful nature and our lives that we were living before Christ and give it to him. And then Holy Spirit in you, right, will result in victorious things. Like you will have victory in all areas of your life. Not just some areas of your life, but all areas of life. If we allow him to move in our lives. So how do you feel led by the Holy Spirit today? How do you feel led? Listen, I, I dropped the ball the other day. Um, Holy Spirit, God was telling me, go home. And I was doing something, uh, Lyft and Uber. Lyft, not Uber, but I was doing ride share. And because I didn't take heed... Um, to what he was telling me to do, uh, I got into a situation. And because of that situation, um, then I realized, wow, Holy Spirit does love me and does care about every single thing that's going on in my life, even my safety. So, Holy Spirit in you, how do you feel led by Holy Spirit God? So, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, you know the drill. Just leave it right on here. If this is your first time, Coming through to the Morning Diva, welcome. I love first timers. If you want to share your name and where you're from, it's all good. Um, if you need a prayer request, have a prayer request. Amen. We'll pray for you right here on the spot. Also, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you could always inbox me if you want things to be behind the scenes. Um, the live chat is up. Also, if you're on the podcast listening, there should be a way to contact me from whatever platform you're listening from. And I'll get back to you ASAP. Uh, tonight, we're going to have a special um, Bible study with Brother Andrew Santos tonight, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time around there. I don't know if we're going to do a live or pre-record, so I should not even announce it. But he's going to uh, special guest. Also, if you haven't been uh, watching or listening lately, you're going to see a couple of guests that I had this year um, that will bless you. Amen. That will, were on the Blaze Bible study um, and on the podcast with me. So. Uh, I'm blessed, and I hope you're going to be blessed. So this could go two ways. If you're a believer, this is going to reinforce your belief in the Holy Spirit, God living inside of you. <clears throat> if you're not a believer, then you might you might want what we believers have by way of Holy Spirit. So either way, we'll both benefit. If whatever side of the fence you are, if you're from another Christian 
um, background or another faith background that doesn't consider Jesus, right, to be who he says he is, God in the flesh, Savior of the world, amen, then you can still listen. Because what happens is when the Holy Spirit God moves, he does the convincing. I don't have to convince anybody about Jesus being exactly who he said he is. Holy Spirit God, the hope of glory, will convince you if you're open to his word. Amen. So let's pray. And then when we come back after the minute, we're going to share this out. We'll pray, share this out for a minute. Then when we come back, we'll be in Romans chapter 8, verses 11 to 14. So let's do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for your spirit that lives inside of me and inside of every single person that said yes to you. I pray, Lord God, that every single Holy Spirit-filled Christian right now will be praying for those who are not filled by your spirit, those who do not believe, that, Lord God, you will reveal yourself, you will convince and convict those who are denying who you are, who are being restricted by another religion to not investigate your claims. I pray, Lord God, freedom, peace, be still, and know that you are God and sovereign God in our lives and in their lives as well. I pray, Lord God, for the endless possibilities of your word to do what your word says your word would do in this Romans chapter 8 chapter. So I pray peace. I pray uh, safety. I pray health, strength, and protection to every single person that's listening, every single person that's watching. By the powerful name of Jesus, I set forth our queen angels, minister angels. Thank you for the angel of the Lord that encamped around me because I love you, God, that protected me when I needed to be protected. And that same angel of the Lord or whatever angel that's assigned to the lives of all those that are listening and watching right now on a replay or live, that that same angel of the Lord encamps around those who love God. And I thank you, Lord God, that that angel of the Lord is on assignment for our lives, for our safety, for our health, for our strength, uh, for our financial breakthrough, for everything that's needed to live this life, to move forward in victory. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. I'm hoping you're going to get something out of here. This is Romans chapter 8. Verses 11 to 14. We'll be back after this minute and we'll be in that scripture. I'll be right back. Amen. Let's get into it. Let's get into Romans chapter 8, verses 11 to 14. The Bible says, The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. So I just want to let you know this. This is a message for Christians, people who are filled with Holy Spirit God. But if you're not filled with Holy Spirit God, listen closely and you could eavesdrop of what's going on with a Christian in their lives or what should be happening in a Christian life. So that way, if you see a Christian that claims to be a Christian acting crazy, you can hold them to the scripture. The spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by this same spirit living within you. It's the same spirit, not a different spirit, right? And not a metaverse thing. The same spirit of God. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. So if you're going around saying, listen, I couldn't help it. You know, it was the the urge and the temptation. We have no obligation to the urges and temptations. We have no obligations to the sinful nature. Therefore, brothers and sisters, you have no obligation. You see, it's right there. Romans chapter 8, 11 to 14. You have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. You don't have, you're not obligated. You don't have to sin. You don't have to give in to your flesh. You don't have to. The enemy's been telling you that for years, right? He used to tell me that. 
um, until I realized that I'm not obligated to listen to him and I'm not obligated to um, be under my own sinful desires. Nope. I'm not obligated. Is it hard? Sometimes it depends on where you're at, what atmosphere you're hanging around, who you're hanging around with, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're feeding. No obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. The dictates of your sinful nature, your flesh, you will die. But, this is the good news, but if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. Who doesn't want to live? And who doesn't want to live in victory? I do. I want to live in victory. How? I'm going to take the power of the Spirit of God in me and put to death the deeds of my sinful nature. It's so possible. You might be saying, well, uh, why, do, why do we deal with sin then? Because we deal with sin. Jesus conquered sin and death. We're just catching up to what he already did. And because we have doors closed, maybe, in our hearts, right? In our soul, in our way of thinking, we have those doors closed. Literally, not literally, but, you know, figuratively, because God can see all things. And behind those doors, we're not allowing Holy Spirit God to work in our lives. Because we might be holding on to some things that we don't want to let go. It's not that you're not delivered. It's that you're not allowing God to completely deliver you. And if you know God like I know God, he's not going to force anything on us. If we're not doing it because we're willfully let, allowing God to let us in, he's not going to push any doors and knock any doors down in our heart. He's not that type of God. It's not a forced religion, right? Christianity is not a forced religion. It's a willful thing. We have to be willing. Amen? So if you're a Christian, listen up. And if you're not a Christian, call a Christian out. Call me out if you see me acting opposite of what the Holy Spirit God is doing in my life. And then you can use the same scripture against me if you want. Romans 8, 11 to 14. But through the power of the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. For all, A-L-L, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. All who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. Not all, not this whole thing about we're all God's children because we're all created in His image. Yes, we're all created in His image, but we're not all God's children. That's for sure. Can't you tell the difference between a child of God and a person uh, who is not a child of God? You can't tell. I know people People could be really nice people. I met some atheists that were, they put me to shame with their politeness. But they're not God's children, according to the scriptures. I'm not saying it. Scripture is saying it. So what is the Holy Spirit's connection to life? In these verses that we read, what's his connection to life? Holy Spirit God. It seems like wherever he is and whatever he is allowed to do in your life, he'll bring you victory. He'll bring you life. He will let you remind us that we are not obligated to sin. We don't have to stop in selling this to people for years. We don't have to sin. As a matter of fact, when Jesus gave us his spirit, amen, we could look at sin now and say no. Do you realize before Jesus gave us his spirit, we could we were like bound to sin? We were actually slaves to sin. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. So we were actually working for sin and our payment would have been death. Death, right? But since God placed his Holy Spirit in us, we're not obligated any longer to sin. We're not, according to the scripture. I hold God's word to God's word. And if God's word is not real in my life, amen, then I'll keep moving. But it just so happens that when you test the word of God, then when I test the word of God, his word is powerful. His word is evident in my life and in a believer's life that I know. Um, it's not about perfection. It's about who is we're being uh, molded into the image of Jesus. Who are we resembling? Who are we imitating? Who are we like? Amen. If I'm a Christian and I'm not, like, I'm not being like Christ, then I don't know what I am. Some religious zealot or something like that. But according to the scripture... I'm not obligated, you're not obligated, if you're a believer, to sin. If you're not a Christian right now and you're listening or watching, you're kind of, well, let's just say it like this. You can't say no to sin. 
I don't care how good of a person you think you are. You cannot say no to sin while Holy Spirit God in you saying no to sin. I know. And if you're honest, the things that you continuously do that even you might be awoke to, like you might be awakened to some things that you do. You'd be like, why do I continue to do this to myself or to others, knowing that it leads to this, that and a third and it's not a good thing? You ever wondered why you continue to do things over and over and over again that are not right good for you or good for the party that you're involved in or good for your family members or anything? You ever wonder why you continuously, continuously do those same things that are hurting people, not helping people? Could it be that you are in bondage to sin or could it be that you are uh, being so enticed you're living by the flesh, not by the spirit? It could be those things. If we're honest with you know ourselves, we're honest with each other, we'll realize that man, I've been doing these things over and over again, and I'm realizing that it's not really a good thing for anybody. So what is the Holy Spirit's connection to life in these verses? Well, the power of the Holy Spirit will put to death those things that are in your flesh, the deeds of your sinful nature. And sin has like its own life, like Sin just comes up. Your flesh just comes up. And this world system, wow. Do I need to say anything about this world system? What it's dragging us into? And it's not nothing different. When I was a kid, and the kids now, they're facing the same spirit of this age. That's enticing you to do things opposing to the word of God, opposing to your very own self, opposing to other people's well-being and health and all that Opposing all of that and the sense the sinful nature that's if we're not careful that could live inside of us, not in us, because Holy Spirit God is in every single believer, but in our mindset, the way we act, our behavior, that sinful nature <clears throat> could take us on a long journey to nothing, nothingness. Right? It's not it's not like you'll be wasting your time, but it'll just be time wasted. So how do you feel led <clears throat> by the Holy Spirit in your life? It's not about how I'm being led in my life. Amen. Yet, even, even being led by Holy Spirit the other night, I, I, I was hearing the Holy Spirit and I still did what I wanted to do. And it caused some trouble. Right? It caused some trouble because I wasn't listening to the Spirit of God. Amen. Uh, but because of His grace and mercy upon me, I got home safe. I was in a place of danger. I got home safe. Amen. So I'll leave it like that. But had I listened and stopped thinking that it was my, um, uh, I know a lot of people talk about intuition. Stop thinking it was like a funny, um, funny feeling. It was a bad vibe for sure. But then Holy Spirit said, go home. And I, I said, you know what? One more, you know, one more trip um, makes a little bit more money. And that because I didn't listen, I put myself in a situation that I should not have been in. The Holy Spirit God speaks. People say, oh, Holy Spirit is a force. Listen, I, I like Star Wars too, but I'm not talking about the force. I'm talking about Holy Spirit God, the person of Holy Spirit God, of the Godhead, speaking to me, speaking to other believers, letting us know, oh, we shouldn't do that. We shouldn't go there. We should go home. He knows. He's God. All-knowing, all-seeing God. And if we don't listen... Then, you know, something opposite of what he was telling us could happen to us. Go home. Well, if I deny that, like I did the other day, uh, I might have not made it home. Not because really anybody's fault. Not because of the enemy. Because he's already defeated. Not because of the spirit of this age. Might be just because I wasn't listening. How about that? Plain and simple. Right? Can't blame everything on God. Can't blame everything on the Holy Spirit. Can't blame everything on Jesus. Um, so I know that it wasn't God's mistake. It was my mistake. That's it. But thank God for his mercy and his grace and his protection and his power. Amen. And to keep me safe. That's all I'm going to say. So, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature, this word is important, urges you to do. Who's urging you to do things that are sinful? Is it God? Absolutely not. The devil? Maybe. But it has a lot to do with our own sinful urges. Our own nature 
born urges to do sinful things. And please, if you're a Christian, you know what I'm talking about. I don't think anybody has arrived to a place where like, you know what? Psst, nothing tempts me. Okay. Um, now you have to repent from lying, right? Because we're living in a, a saturated, sinful, saturated world, sin saturated society. So if you're not being tempted, that means you are not alive. You are in the matrix somewhere. You're in heaven. You're done, right? You're you're in glory. If you're not feeling the wiles of this world, if you're not feeling tempted to do things opposite of what God's word asks of us to do. Amen. If you want the full experience of what's going on and you want to see um, some past episodes and some guests, go to live.soulwinnerswithz.org. That's the main platform going forward. The end, this, uh, end of this year um, could end in a good way, it could end in a bad way. I just want it to end in God's way, however he wants it. I'll take whatever God brings into my life by way of his spirit. Because I know for sure that at the end of the day, if I'm being led by Holy Spirit God, amen, I have victory. No matter what the circumstances look like, no matter what could possibly happen to me, amen, I know for sure that I have the victory regardless of what it looks like, right? I have the Holy Spirit God who lives inside of me. He, Holy Spirit God. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So if I'm, the, if I'm a child of God, and if you're not, there should be a difference. I'm not saying I'm better because I'm a child of God. I'm just saying my destiny is best as a child of God. That's what I'm saying. Uh, obviously, there's people who have more finances. Obviously, there's people who have more uh, things than me, uh, more connections than me, more friends than me, right? Obviously, I'm not perfect. Obviously, I'm just a man. Obviously, I'm limited. But Holy Spirit God who lives in me is not that obvious. He is limitless. He's without sin. He's all-powerful, almighty. He has all strength. He has all love, grace, and mercy. He has everything that we need. And because he has everything that we need, and I'm a child of God, amen, everything has been given. I'm just not I, I'm just not understanding how this is possible. And neither are you. Don't look at me like that. What do you mean you don't understand? You don't understand how Holy Spirit is doing work in your life either. Scriptures explain a lot of what Holy Spirit God does in our lives, but it's not the all. I, I dare to say that the scriptures, the Bible that we have and that we hold in our hands, or if you have it on your app, it's not the whole total God that we that is being spoke of. God didn't place himself in the confines of a book. Right? There's more to God than the Bible. So is that blasphemy? If it is, forgive me. But it's not I don't think it's blasphemy. I know that God is limitless. He's not limited to what we can understand about him. There's religions out there that they claim to understand their deity, their God. Completely, and they know everything about their God, and they're they're claiming to be, you know, in tune with everything that their God does. As a Christ follower, I can't say that I don't know everything that God, my God, is doing. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Elohim, God, right? You know, wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Almighty God, Son of God, Holy Spirit, God. I don't know everything that He is doing. And no, it's not three gods, it's one God. Three personalities, one on God. Amen. Three persons, one God. I don't know everything that God does in my life. I don't know what everything that God does in your life. I don't know what he's doing around this world and this earth all the time, every time. But when I go into his word, he gives us like these little glimpses, these windows into his mind, into his heart, his resume of what he did in the past is what he can do for us in the future. And more than that, right? So I'm okay not understanding everything about God. But Holy Spirit God leads me as a child of God into all truth, not all lies. So guide, guard, protect me, sustain me, maintain me, right? Um, gives us everything we need, everything that I need. Not everything that I want necessarily, but everything that I need to live this life out for his glory. Amen. And for his purposes. Whatever that looks like, amen. To some, uh, like this book I have here, this man was born without any, li no limbs, no arms, no legs. 
yet he's being used by the for the glory of God all around the world, and he's smiling about it. When I when I open these pages of this book, when I look at his story, when I hear his um, testimony, I don't. I listen. I ain't got nothing to complain about. He has a lot to complain about. He's still not complaining. He has no arms or legs. Yet God is using him all around the world to preach the gospel by way of Holy Spirit God. That's the Holy Spirit God I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some force. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm not talking about some kind of like karma. I'm not talking about some kind of, um, you know, universe. There's a lot of lingo out there, man, that eeks, you know, what's that word? Bothers me like. Talking to the universe for it. You know what I mean? Get your game up. Speak to the God of the universe. Why are you speaking to a created thing? Why are you worshiping something that's created? How are you speaking to the creation and you don't want to speak to the creator? It's weird to me. I think even before I was saved, I knew that was weird. It sounds like some comic book stuff. Or oh, I'm speaking to the universe. Or oh, I'm manifesting whatever I want to manifest. It sounds weird to me. No disrespect for those people who believe that. Um, I'm not buying into that. It sounds really weird. Almost, I know what I'm believing is, is really weird to a lot of people too. You believe in God, invisible God that you can't feel, touch, or see, this, that, and the third, and you believe him? Yes. How do I know that he exists? Because he changed my life. Can't tell me nothing. I I've, I've did other things besides going to Jesus, besides going to God. And those other things that I was Dipping, dipping, dabbing in, they did have power. They did have power, but the ultimate power to completely satisfy my soul was only found when I called on God and then Jesus showed up. I was looking for complete satisfaction for my life and Jesus showed up. Gandhi didn't show up, Muhammad didn't show up, Confucius didn't show up, um, Joseph Smith didn't show up, no angel showed up. Um, you know, Jesus showed up. And I had a big problem. I was like, wait a minute. I don't, I don't believe in Jesus. At that time, I didn't believe that Jesus was my savior. I thought he was the savior to certain people. But when he showed up in my life, I was like, uh-oh. Is he going to do this to my life? He's going to change my life? And boom, he did it. Don't ask me to explain how he did it. All I know is that he did it. Way back in 2001. And we're 20 years past and I'm still I still can't believe that he would take time to save a sinful man that I was. His grace and his mercy is still mind blowing to me. I respect and honor and give worship and praise to the Lord Jesus. And I know everybody's not gonna do that. And I know, you know, people don't believe. I understand that. I understand one hundred percent because I was one of those people. So I'm not gonna argue. For either either way, all I know is that he does change lives. So, Holy Spirit in you, understand that if you are led by his spirit, amen, you are being led by the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. How do you feel led by Holy Spirit God today? So, I'm out of time here, but I'm blessed. I hope you were blessed. And if you're not a believer, what are you waiting for? Get into the scriptures, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the Gospels for yourself. And stop believing the hype of other people that's saying that this is all like um, not real. God will make it real in your life, right? So God bless you all. God keep you all. And remember that God is good. Peace.